Chester Violet may have two albums under her belt. I've been on YouTube since 2006 under the name Mika Kitty and also had a highly publicized friendship with both Poppy and Ray William Johnson and many others. But what causes an unproblematic YouTube musician to delete, private or unlist over 200 videos through their career? Have the majority of the first half of their YouTube career in video form missing and so much evidence of their former friendships to just vanish. This is a bizarre world of the lost art of Tessa Violet. Between the day the channel was created, July 16, 2006, and September 1, 2014, there is one public video which is entitled Until Then Reliant K. Savannah. The majority of the videos that are lost, or at least unlisted slash privated, were between this eight year period. But let's start at the beginning, 2006, when YouTube looked like this. Actually, let's not. The early save on the Wayback Machine is 2009, when YouTube actually looked like this. She stated in 2010, when talking to NY Post, that she started vlogging in 2007 as a senior in high school although not much if any footage can be found from those videos. A site called VK which has a lot of the removed videos and if it doesn't it has the thumbnails and shows their evidence only goes back to 2010. Also in 2008, a year earlier than the earliest save, there's a collab channel called 5 Awesome Bucks Fans. I couldn't find much, there was one tweet re-uploads of videos from someone called Jen and a tryout video, along with individual uploads from other people potentially involved in the group at the time, although there's no videos of Tessa anywhere to be found and the channel is now a dead link. But this wouldn't be the only collab channel Tessa was involved in, nor would it be the only one with very scarce information known, which leads us perfectly into the next section. This is by no means a list or anything, but there's a few creators that Tessa has made multiple videos with or featured in that simply vanished. Either the videos are gone or the channel in some cases. In this section, I want to focus on Mitchell Davis, Ray William Johnson, and of course, Poppy. Ray William Johnson is a creator who is most famous for his groundbreaking series Equals 3, and at one stage being the most subscribed to channel on the platform. I'm not sure on how they met, although he was in her featured channels in 2009. I still can't pinpoint anything. She served as part of the production team of Ray's vlogging channels, Breaking NYC and Breaking LA. She also appeared in the music video for Doing Your Mum as a dancer. Hardly anything exists even showing their friendship outside the Doing Your Mum video. Tessa tweeted in 2009 that she had a crush on him, but outside of that there isn't too much mention of him, and I don't think there's any direct ats outside of that. He even featured in her song Star Trek Girl, which has also been removed from her channel, although re-upload does exist. There's also a very small video from Blog TV of them together, and an edit that features a bunch of photos from the now defunct Daily Booth website. Oh, and those several episodes of Breaking LA and Breaking NYC that she featured in? I wonder what happened to those. Oh, that's right, the channels have been wiped. Although there's an almost complete backup of Breaking NYC online somewhere, which I have seen, so I can actually see her in some of them. It's unknown if they're still friends, but it's unlikely. It's also speculated that they dated. Mitchell Davis was the host of Live Lava Live. His friendship with Tessa can be traced back to his earlier 2009 year. 2009 also saw the creation of another collab channel entitled Blog Vedica, which was described like Helvetica but better. It consisted of Mitchell, Tessa, Nanalu, Catrific, and Pogo Bat. In fact, they went on the tour called the Dial Up Tour in 2012, which had Mitchell, Tessa, Nanalu, Jason Munday, Alex Carpenter, and Kyle Siebert. Some fan videos still exist, including this one. <laughs> They also went to Playlist Live. He's unknown if they're still friends. So what happened to Vlog Vedica? That's right, it's gone. Entirely. All that exists is some vlog footage from meetups and the trailer for the start of the channel is floating around too. Photos can be found of Mitchell and Tessa in person, so it's not as obscure as 
some of the other things mentioned in this video. Poppy, as she's known today, was a far cry from who she was when she was in the music industry, when Tessa and her were friends. Out of the three creators that I've mentioned, I would say that Poppy has the most dedicated fan base. They can find almost anything if it can be found. There's quite a few photos of Poppy with Tessa floating around, although some are from Tessa's Instagram, but back when Poppy was just doing cover songs. Tessa was her friend, which is where the photos come from. The earliest mention I could find was 2012 and from April Lockhart who had previously collaborated with Poppy, mentioning the 2012 playlist live. I also believe that Hey Hi Hello are an important part of the story because the drummer is related to Tessa, although through April's tweet it can be assumed that Tessa and Poppy met a playlist that year and she met future collaborators Hey Hi Hello through that as well, though it can't be confirmed. Outside of all this, Tessa may be best known for recording the cover of Cannibal Queen, which was recorded with Rusty Clanton, which interestingly enough can be seen in some deleted Tessa videos, the same background at least. This Cannibal Queen cover was taken down during the mass privatization of Poppy's covers when she decided to reinvent herself. The latest tweet relayed to Poppy from Tessa was in 2013, but though it is unknown when their friendship fell apart. Although, if the popular theory is to be believed, it was 2014 at the latest, if the theory that Tessa's song, Small, is in fact about Poppy. There's also other people that have had friendships with Tessa that have had videos and such deleted from her channel for unknown reasons. Back to the large list of missing content. While we're completely messing up the order of events, this is largely looking at content between 2006 and 2014. Unfortunately, there does not exist a complete video list to go through and see what has and hasn't been saved. She doesn't even have her own wiki. She does have a Wikipedia page though, which does list songs that were released, which we'll go through soon. Also, I know it's not video related exactly, but if we go back to the first save of the channel, none of the links work anymore except the Twitter. Daily Booth is now defunct, although they have a video on their channel showing some photos of her. Blog TV is also defunct and the MySpace link has a save on the Wayback Machine at the time, 2009, but outside of that, it's a dead end. YouTube's interface was a lot different in 2009 compared to what it is now. Some would say it actually had a better layout in 2009. The save on the Wayback Machine interestingly offers a lot of information. For different saves in 2009, we can see that on October 8th, she had 104 videos on the channel, and surprisingly, most of them have thumbnails intact. So what does and doesn't exist today in those 104 videos? It's also worth noting that the earliest videos around that time were vlogs from her modelling, but I don't know if they were daily and some were deleted or if they were just uploaded as they stayed. The Live from Hong Kong series has day 12, 14, 15, 16, 24, 34, 40, 52, 56 and 61. Does that mean we're missing 50 just from that section alone? I don't know. Day 52 has been re-uploaded to YouTube and it's the earliest video that can be found online of Tessa from that list, although Day Zero does also exist via re-upload too. Here's roughly what has been archived from the list of 104 videos, apart from Day 52. Good morning New York. Harder, faster, better, stronger. Dear Fresned, I regret to inform you. Shanghai is better than New York. Weird party tricks and amazing accents. Bloody Mary is the girl I love. Left handed draw and tag game, I'm in love with the Myria Kart love song, Want Me Want Me, Snow Queen, 51 Things I Found in My Suitcase, Hiatus, Work Schmirk Day 2, Tessa plus Caffeine equals Worst Idea Ever, Field Trip, I Got a Cape, and Frank Bleep. Meaning that prior to 2009, 80 plus videos are seemingly gone. All of these stats are taken from the re-uploads of Highly Elite who has been re-uploading and continues to re-upload deleted and unlisted Tessa Violet videos. They have currently uploaded over 150 videos. There's a chance that some of these have been re-uploaded by other people as other videos do exist in archive form outside of Highly Elite. For example, this video has a lot of older footage. There's a few compilations like this from the time. This one for example was uploaded in 2010 and it features a very interesting comment which could provide many answers. If you want numbers, there are 204 listings listed on the unlisted videos website for videos by Tessa Violet that are unlisted. 
except almost all of them have since been privatised completely. As I said, not all hope is lost though. Highly Elite is archiving and re-uploading videos of Tessa's. But 2009 is only three years into Tessa's YouTubing, so what about the next five years? Well, let's get into that. In early 2010, Tessa won a contest, the Lashes to Riches giveaway, which netted her 100k, and while the original upload doesn't exist, a re-upload does. And this is some of that video that won Tessa 100k in early 2010. I would probably use most of it to pay for my college. No have, oh, college fundo. I would take my mom on a vacation to Prague as a thank you for supporting every ridiculous hobby or dumb thing I've ever been into, including but not limited to this whole YouTube obsession. Things really seemed to change after that. She took her mom to Rome, a holiday like she said she would when she won the money, and also got a new camera like she said she would. So from then on, things were never really the same it seems. Even when she returned from Rome, the videos changed. The higher production value wasn't as relatable looking back on it. Although she continued to get decent views and growth through that time, the relatable thing is mostly a hindsight thing and personal opinion. Let's put a video before and after the prize money side by side. There were many removed videos in 2010 as well, which I won't go into. I also think the inclusion of Maker Studios was a big part in the change. Although I can't find exact record of when that happened, there's a mention that it was prior to 2012 allegedly and was potentially 2010. It could also be linked to the previously mentioned Ray William Johnson as he was partnered with Maker Studios at the time of the vlogs Tessa featured in. Maker Studios also helped to produce her debut album but we'll talk about music in another section. 2010 also saw her feature in Season 1 Episode 9 of The Professionals entitled The Episode of Love which is still online can see Tessa's acting ability in full force. 2010 also saw Tessa attend VidCon with Kat Trific and Nanalu. Speaking of Nanalu, they met on YouTube in 2008, according to an article by Journey Online. They were collectively known as Nana Kitty. They had a collab channel where they opened fan mail, which surprisingly is still online. It's called Nana Kitty Manor. It's unknown how many, if any, collaborative videos of theirs no longer exist. Although the existence of a video called On Set with Nana Kitty can be found. A playlist entitled Nana Kitty Activate has 36 videos unavailable. Although as playlists are these days, it doesn't show what those videos are or were. Many of the videos on Nana Lou's channel exist of them together. Most notably the fan music video for sale which has more views than the original. I could go into depth about their friendship, but I won't. They attended many events together and were long-time collaborators, although it's unknown if they're still friends. Although this doesn't fit into the lost art section of the video, here's what 2011 had in store for Tessa. She released a music video for two songs, Star Trek Girl with Ray William Johnson and Wizard Love with Hey Hi Hello, and you guessed it, she took them down. The uploads still exist thankfully and honestly, they're good. What's a bit strange, as opposed to the other videos and older vlogs, is that these went somewhat viral at the time. 2011 also saw a virtual concert held, featuring Tessa, Hey Hi Hello, The Fates, and Borns. The year also saw the release of more music like The Bacon Song and Nabby Song. She also featured in Rhett and Link's The Breakup Song. Which leads us perfectly into the next interruption of the roughly 8 years section. Music. Tessa Violet is known as a musician, and a good one at that. Unfortunately, some of the lost art of Tessa Violet comes in the form of music. This section won't have any chronological order by the way, but everything mentioned, unless specified otherwise, has had the original upload privatised, unlisted, or deleted. Previously mentioned Star Trek Girl, the music video can be found on YouTube in re-upload form, although it can't be streamed. On the other hand, Wizard Love, which has also been re-uploaded, can be streamed on Spotify via Hey Hi Hello. There is actually a Mika Kitty Spotify artist page with three songs on it. Wizard Love included along with another song this music video was deleted but it's been archived. It's Chill by Lancifer. Beat the Heat is also on Spotify and remains the only Mika Kitty specific song that still has the original upload online. 
For some reason, you can't stream her debut album, Maybe Trapped, Mostly Troubled, on Spotify, although it is entirely on her YouTube if you go to the Albums and Singles section. Her original songs and covers have a strange history on YouTube. There seems to be no rhyme or reason as to what is and isn't online. Despite the music video being taken down, although it's been re-uploaded, you can still stream Navi's song on Apple Music. Same with the Bacon song. Let's Go Outside by Luke and Tessa has also been recovered and can actually still be purchased to this day on Bandcamp. Playlist from 2014 called Me and My Guitar shows some covers and original songs. Of these six videos, Home is the only one that hasn't been recovered as of yet. Although, as previously stated, every video from this playlist is noticed in its original form, although the five that do have been re-uploaded. When I Write My Songs About You has not been re-uploaded but can be played in full on the Wayback Machine despite being privatised. I assume it will be re-uploaded soon on YouTube. The cover of Everybody's Got Someone But Me has also been privatised but re-uploaded. Same with the song Oh Tommy, the lyric videos from the Halloway EP also aren't online anymore, although the audio and the songs you can actually stream on Spotify. Rusty Clanton is someone who collaborated with Tessa on multiple occasions. They also dated and even had a duo called People You Know. Tessa has wiped the videos they did together from her channel, likely due to the breakup, although Rusty still has videos with her on his channel. Before I mention what is on his channel, let's talk about what was removed. Bear in mind, all of these have been archived and can be viewed through Highly Elite. As a duo, they made a Christmas EP, and one upload from Tessa exists from that. What are you doing New Year's? The duo, as previously mentioned, was People You Know. They also covered Riptide by Vance Joy. They did one cover and one original. Good Little Girl and Do You Love Me Too, respectively. They also did a podcast called Tourcast, of which only three episodes exist on SoundCloud, although the titles can be found via iVooks. But I don't think any episodes prior to episode 13 exist in full online. The songs You and Christmas and You Was are still available on Rusty's channel. They're an original and a cover, respectively. Outside of that, and after the original mass privatisation, the cover of All Star with Dodie has been privatised. Little Talks with Bri, O'Cat, and Affected. There's likely more, but that's a brief list. The last section of the first eight years stopped around 2011, although the first eight years would ideally go up to 2014. The mass privatisation happened in mid-2016, with songs like Wizard Love being viewable until early 2016. In saying this, Tessa had multiple instances of privating videos and has done it all throughout her YouTube career, but the 2016 mass privatisation was seemingly the largest to date. Although this video isn't as complete as it could be, as stated earlier, there does not currently exist a complete list of uploads and lost videos. Hopefully in the future, there will, although it can be confirmed, hundreds of videos have been privatised or deleted, even post the mass privatisation. For example, Tessa has a series on her channel called Pillow Talk, with every episode except one being public, that episode being with Lucy Moon, which is unlisted. Though it's important to note that the majority of the videos that have been removed are vlogs. Maybe this should have been mentioned earlier, but Tessa has actually addressed this. Someone on Instagram asked if she missed the meek cutie days and said this. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching and see you soon for more. Then all at once you were just enough. You're just right, you're the perfect temp. In my coffee cup, one of overslept.